today we're going to start a, a new journey and we're going to start by looking at some of the things that take place in life that get us off course. Some of the things that, that happen that, you know, we don't see them coming sometimes. And these things just take us and, and they just push us in the wrong direction from where we were going. You know, let's look at uh, the situation we're in right now. Who would have ever thought, who would have ever thought that we'd be in this situation where schools are closed, businesses are closed, unemployment is at record levels? Who would have ever thought that in the last couple of months, more Americans would have died from this pandemic than the entire 10-year period of the Vietnam War? Who would have ever thought that uh, today, I think the statistic was 79,000 people in the United States have contracted this particular disease. Our country's on lockdown. It's starting to open up. Uh, you can still go to stores and the meat counters are empty. Yeah, there's some toilet paper out there, but not a whole lot. And hand sanitizer is still like gold. And then the other thought is nobody really knows who has the pandemic? Who has the virus? Things in life just simply come out of nowhere sometimes and totally disrupt us. On a very personal level, sometimes things in life uh, happen suddenly. A loved one becomes ill overnight. Uh, maybe there's a car accident that takes place. And or a job loss all of a sudden. You go into work and you you know, you expect to have a great day in the office and all of a sudden you're packing the stuff out of your desk and putting it all in a cardboard box. Maybe it's a business venture that went sour. But things change very, very rapidly. And sometimes sometimes things change inside of us that get us off track, that get us off course. I remember uh, not too long ago, there was a uh, woman that told me, she said, you know, she says, I used to be very social and I loved people. And she said, but now they just annoy me. So what is it that changes inside of people sometimes that takes us off course? I think that one of the things that changes is all of a sudden cynicism starts to set in. Cynicism is, is when someone who believes that people are simply motivated by self-interest, that that's the way they live. And as a result of that, no one can be trusted because everybody is only interested in themselves. Cynicism shows uh, mm -hmm. contempt, really, for human nature in general. And it just shows an overall level. Uh, a large level of distrust. Let me give you some examples here. Fuel prices. Fuel prices are low, but I read the other day that uh, this one individual said, well, yeah, it's great to have low fuel prices, but once things calm down, they'll jack it back up again. Well, that's kind of a cynical way to look at it. You don't really know whether or not the oil industry or the U.S. oil industry has learned something from this and will change it, but you don't know. So uh, we look at things sometimes and we say, you know, only the bad is going to happen. Only the worst is going to take place. I remember the other day, Dr. Fauci, in one of those um, uh, meetings that uh, are at 5.30 every night during the week uh, where Trump has his... Uh, coronavirus uh, panel, which I think has been disbanded at this point. I'm not sure. But I remember Fauci one night was talking about some trials for a vaccine. And he made a statement. He said it was a very positive step forward in, uh, in fighting off this particular pandemic. But then again, you know, the news media uh, they, uh, I read an article that I can't remember which one it was, but they said, just wait until the drug companies get a hold of it. They'll lock it all up and they'll make it super expensive. And, and again, it's kind of a cynical way 
of looking at things. You know, life for a Christian is absolutely uncharted. It's one of the most difficult, and as I've said a thousand times, it'll be the hardest thing that you ever do. Why? It's because it goes against human nature. Life as a Christian takes you to places that you really just don't want to go. You see, we're to amplify God more in ourselves less. And that's absolutely contradictory to where human nature wants us to go. We, you know, human nature wants us to enjoy all the gusto we can and to be everything that we can be today and so forth. But the Christian faith teaches us that um, we need to promote God and God's ways more in ourself less. You know, look at the uh, John the Baptist. That's exactly what he said uh, toward the end of his ministry. He said that I need to become less. Jesus needs to become more. We're to trust more and more in this unseen plan of God and less on our own interpretation of things. Now, cynicism in, its, in itself, it can be good and bad. It can help us to think things through or it can cloud our judgment. And I don't really think that anyone sets out to be cynical or to be a cynic. It just kind of takes place. If you look at the Bible, there are a lot of examples in Scripture of people uh, that have dealt with cynical attitudes. Now, I'll give you a couple examples here. One of them is uh, Job. Uh, we all know the story of Job, this guy that had everything, and then all of a sudden everything was taken away. and his friends and his wife and everybody is telling him to just curse God and die. And um, But Job struggled with this pessimism, this uh, cynicism during the days of his torment. And he actually cursed the day that he was born. Then look at Jonah. You know, remember Jonah, the one that got ate by the, you know, the giant fish or the whale or whatever? Jonah had a very cynical attitude. Uh, toward this particular town called Nineveh. Uh, God wanted Jonah to go to Nineveh and to preach, you know, repentance to them and ask them to turn back to God. But Jonah, in his cynical attitude, believed that they weren't worth forgiving. And he saw only the negative side of things. He saw only the negative and the bad stuff. And he refused to go to Nineveh. That's why God calls this whale to swallow him up for a couple of days. That'll teach you. And then, of course, one of the most well-known examples of cynicism in the Bible is uh, one that uh, comes from Nathaniel. Nathaniel was talking about the place that uh, Jesus was born, Nazareth. And he makes a statement. He says, Nazareth, can anything good come from there? And again, he's being cynical. He's, he's saying that, you know, look at that place. I mean, there's only bad stuff that comes out of there. The place is not worth it. He, he's looking at things uh, based on his own past, his own experience, and he's, he's looking at things in a way that is not positive or even open to a positive uh, outcome at all. There's a very famous, uh, well-known pastor in Canada his name is Kerry Newhoff, and I'll post on our website a, a link uh, to his website if you would like to check him out. And I would encourage you to do so. He's, he's a good pastor and has a lot of good things to say. But he made a statement once. He said, you know, most cynics are former optimists. And I thought about that, and I'm like, you know, he's probably right. After a while, you, you get beat up by life and you start to see the negative side of things and you start to disbelieve that anything good is going to happen or that good things can come out of it. He really is saying that as we grow up, the older we get, the more we learn and the more that we learn, the more we, we view life through our own past experiences. And that's true. We do. We grow and we see things from past experiences. The Bible talks about that in the book of Ecclesiastes. It says this, 
For with great wisdom or great learning, the more that we learn, comes great frustration. Whoever increases his knowledge merely increases his heartache. It's because we realize that the more that we know, the wiser we become, the more problems we can see in life which really should indicate our need to turn to God even more. Here's the process I think that we kind of go through as we're growing in our cynicism. The older we get, of course, the more experiences we have. And we use those past experiences to determine future outcomes, which then lead to cynicism. Let me give you an example. All of you know that I've been in the autom automobile business for most of my life. And at the retail level, uh, when people would bring their new vehicles into the service department for warranty repairs, uh, sometimes those people would have had bad experiences prior. You know, they took their vehicle in, one that they spent more money on than they ever spent on a vehicle in their life. And they go in and they have a bad experience in a service department. Well, automatically, then they would come into our service department. And not that we were perfect, but that they would come in and they already had a chip on their shoulder because based on their past experience, they, they didn't think they were going to have a good experience. So they were being extremely cynical about the experience even before they got there. It's crazy. Absolutely crazy. And then there's virus stuff. We start to use our past to predict our future. We think that tomorrow is going to turn out just like yesterday. We think that every situation, though, uh, is going to be the same, but they're not. Every situation is different. And we're seeing that today with the, the, the COVID-19. You know, we've handled uh, viruses and things in the past. Some of them have been devastating. Some of them have been relatively easy uh, for science to kind of tackle. But every situation is different. Now, COVID-19, of course, has wreaked havoc in our healthcare system. But it doesn't mean that we won't overcome. It doesn't mean that we won't get to the point to where we have control of this particular pandemic. We have to remain positive. We have to quit using our past experiences to dictate what the future will bring. Now, it might bring the same thing, but it doesn't necessarily guarantee that. You know, I remember, you know, when uh, my, uh, my son Carson was born, I already had two boys, and I kind of thought, you know, well, you know, it's just going to be raising another boy. No, that, that just doesn't work. Any of you that are parents know that. I was naive enough to believe that, my past experience with two boys was going to equal what my new experience would be with boys. And that's just not the case. It's just not the case. Another problem that we have is that um, we, we start believing in something better and simply start preparing for the worse. Let me say that again. With, when we become cynical, we stop believing that something better can take place, and we simply just prepare for the worst. We stop seeing the positive possibilities and only see the problems. A good example is, you know, we have a great weekend, and then Sunday night, it's like, oh, no, tomorrow is Monday again. And I got to go to work again. It's going to be bad. It's this. It's that. Oh, no, not another Monday morning. You see, we start to use past experiences to dictate what is going to take place in the future. Now, there's some problems with that. One of the problems that we have is that when we, when we look at things in that cynical fashion, we start to close ourselves off to other people because we believe that the other people are selfish. We believe that they're only looking out for themselves. We believe that, you know, I've got to be on guard. Um, and we start to alienate ourselves from people. Maybe some of you have, have done that. 
and have it can and can think of some realistic uh, times when you've done that. I can think of a handful of people right now just sitting here uh, that I know have separated themselves from other people uh, because of you know maybe one event, one thing, and they see the whole relationship in a negative fashion. Well, the problem is to separate ourselves from other people. It leads us to closing ourselves off from God. And that's the last thing any of us need, especially in a world that can be very challenging. We don't need to separate ourselves from God. We don't need things in life that are going to uh, cause us to turn away from God. No, not at all. What we need to do is to realize that God can control everything. God has this. And that we don't need to be cynical about God or cynical about our relationship with God. Instead, we need to trust in who he is more. And we need to look at things from a, a godly perspective. You know, we sense that God sometimes can be as unreliable as other people in life. And that makes us a cynic. How do we overcome this? How do we overcome this tendency of human nature to become cynical uh, toward others, toward situations, and especially toward God? How do we do that? Tiffany's going to read from us from the book of 1 Peter, Daddy, chapter 5. Daddy. The four trees. That's the one. The five friends. What's this? So. Colton and I are going to read from 1 Peter 5, verses 8 through 10. So, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring tiger, walketh about seeking whom he may devour, whom re resist steadfast in faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brother brethren that are in the world. But the God of all grace, who hath called us into his eternal glory of Jesus Christ, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. So, can you wave? Let me read another version of that for you. Um, it says, this is from the contemporary English version. It says, be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in your faith, because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of sufferings. And the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered for a little while, will himself restore you, making you strong, firm, and steadfast. What's he saying? He's saying that God has this. He's saying that God will take you, regardless of what situations you have in life, and he'll bring us through them. But we need to not look at our relationship with God, or even with others, uh, through cynical eyes. Cynicism can be something that helps us to, to learn and to, and to appreciate what a particular situation is. And maybe it's something we want to stay away from based on past experience. But cynicism can also lead us to these negative feelings and negative impressions about who God is, or maybe even who another individual is. Now, I'm as guilty as anybody. I really am. I'm confessing that right now. Uh, there have been times in my life where I looked at a person cynically and I just was turned off by him and I thought the worst and whatever. And next thing you know, I have to admit I was way wrong. I remember that happened during our prison ministry days years ago uh, at a, a church uh, Darcy and I were attending. There was a gentleman there that uh, I thought was just, he was just rude and arrogant and every other thing. He ended up being one of the nicest guys and the greatest supporters, uh, a wonderful Christian man. He really did. I was wrong because I was looking at that relationship with him. I was looking at him through cynical eyes. How many times do we do that with God? 
How many times do we read scripture cynically and not realize that what God is doing here, you know, from beginning to end, is providing a way for us to come home? It's that simple. Cynicism is one of those things that can get us off course in a heartbeat. Stay away from it.